Tropical Storm Helene set to become a major hurricane and make landfall on Thursday. Hi, everybody. I'm Chief Meteorologist Chris Justice, keeping you up to date on this system as it's going to bring those high impacts far inland. I have big time concerns about the wind and the rain that gets pushed into areas that just don't typically see those kind of winds as this system gathers strength today into tomorrow. What I'm going to do here for you is map this out for you uh, town by town, state by state, and hour by hour. Hour, but you need to know that the time to prepare is now. This system is not, uh, you know, days and days away. It's going to start to impact areas in Florida tomorrow, then Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina as we go into Thursday. And I expect significant, if not catastrophic, impacts in each of those states as this moves forward here. If you will, if you're new to this page, I will give you updates through this storm. Please subscribe right now, like this video, and let me know in the comments section where you're watching from. That helps me affect let you know what's going on with this system. But right now, a big blow up of convection or storms around it. What needs to happen later today is it's going to get more organized and that system is going to take off. And unfortunately, it's in an area, as you look at this map that's so effective from Tomer Berg right here, it's a lot of things on a map. It's got the new track from the Hurricane Center, which you see here, but it also plots the heat energy and the water content there. If there was a, a bad place for a tropical system to be, it's here. This is probably the worst place for it to be because um, it's going to allow it to strengthen. It's like having uh, an open can of gasoline around it, and this system's just going to take off from a tropical storm near 60 mile per hour winds later tonight to a hurricane tomorrow to a strong hurricane tomorrow afternoon to a major hurricane with winds over 115 miles per hour at landfall somewhere between Panama City Beach and Apalachicola. Okay, that's the that's the latest track right now. Then it veers up through 75 toward Atlanta, and that's when we get into some issues in the upstate. I'd almost rather it just barrel right through Atlanta, Greenville, because when you're on that right side, you're so vulnerable to severe weather, including tornadoes. This is going to be a major flood event for North Carolina, South Carolina, and Tennessee. Uh, this is the most impactful storm I think we've had in years for those states locally, okay? So we've got to really prepare for this. And though the cone shows you where the center of the circulation is going to be, you've got to be prepared for those impacts well outside of it. And another thing to note here, how fast it's moving north. It's very possible that you still have a hurricane sitting over central Georgia to the fact that it's barely weakening as it moves north into those areas. So uh, you know, tropical storm at the very least moving through the upstate of South Carolina, Atlanta into Charlotte. Uh, but it's very possible that those areas have gusts that are even higher than that. So let's show you what's happening right now with regard to the track. You see it here on the screen, multiple different tracks. You got multiple uh, areas watching this. The GFS is right over the upstate, the European just to the west. And then you got a landfall here somewhere between uh, the Big Bend region, Apalachicola, and then Panama City. All right. So anywhere in that area could have a landfall. And of course, you know, the, the more west you are from a storm, um, the slightly lower your impacts are. So the ensemble means for, for this system are as follows. So there's the swath. So basically the far outlier ones you kind of take off, the far outliers over here you take off, and the answer somewhere here in the middle, right through Georgia, which puts um, these areas in Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina on that more vulnerable, yeah, worst side of it, okay? I'd almost, again, rather plow right through our area than, than, than go uh, to the west of us. So as we map this out, as we look closer at it moving forward here, uh, all of our European, the GFS, and the UK Met, you've got the ensembles plotted here too. They're all in that, that camp of, of central Georgia uh, to the west, which puts the most rain into the upstate, into western North Carolina, where those totals go up in a hurry, all right? So the intensity, this is so important for the winds downstream. Because it's moving so fast, you typically get a system that, that makes landfall and then weakens because it's now over land and it's moving slowly. The friction with the ground underneath and the hurricane on top weakens that system. But because it's moving so fast, it doesn't have a chance to weaken as much. So where it makes landfall and, and what it makes landfall at, as, what, it, what kind of hurricane it is, is so, so important because... What's going to happen with this system is if it makes landfall as a Cat 4 and then weakens, those winds downstream are much stronger. If it makes landfall as a Cat 3, as it's inland, it's now a Cat 2, Cat 
cat one, all right? So if it makes landfall as a cat one, it, it's much weaker inland. Does that make sense? So what's gonna happen here is the more intense it is at landfall, um, the more intense it's gonna be downstream. And I'm gonna get into these forecasts for you, county by county in Florida, winds, rain, everything. So stay with me. I'm just gonna give you an overarching view of it first, and then and then we'll get into some of these impacts. But here's the the, the GFS ensembles. You've got the, the main operational run in red right here. It's a bit more to the east. You've got the black, which is the ensemble members, which is probably where the, the answer lies, all right? So I trust the black line because it it runs the GFS model 26 or 28 different times uh, to end up with an answer, okay? The, the operational red one is a more substantial model, uh, but it's not run with all those different variables put in. Um, so the answer is right in here. This is where the center goes, not where the impacts will go. That's so key to tell you guys, folks, okay? So uh, whether you're in Miami or you're in, in Myrtle Beach or you're in Charlotte or you're in Asheville or you're in Greenville, impacts will be high with this system anywhere you go. What does the ship's model say? It's got a Cat 3 at landfall, then a Cat 2, then a storm. This matches well with the National Hurricane Center forecast. The environment around it, so the max winds peak upon landfall, then go down. But notice it doesn't go down that quickly because it's moving so quickly. Does that make sense? And then it crashes once it's been over land for a long period of time. Uh, same with the intensity. Up until landfall, then its intensity forecast inevitably weakens because it's not over water anymore. The wind shear, the shear upon land, it's minimal right now. So this is low. So low wind shear up until landfall means there's nothing to disrupt it, which means this is likely to rapidly intensify. Bomb out, if you will. Tropical storm, cat one, cat two, cat three. You'll likely hear us talking about it. The ceiling is a cat four, unfortunately. Um, it's very possible we get a cat four at landfall. Uh, the wind shear significantly increases upon landfall. Sea surface temperatures, of course, there's not a sea when it makes landfall. So ideally, I mean, almost off the charts, type warm waters, humidity surrounding it. There's not dry air entrenched in it. It's the Gulf of Mexico at the most humid time of year. And then the heat content. It's in an area that's at its warmest. That's why it's in in, in an area with gasoline, goes down a little bit. And then when it makes landfall, um, it's it's over land. So therefore it loses that, that potential there. Let's map out the different models. Let's start with the European. It's been very consistent. A uh, landfall is a strong hurricane um, somewhere just east of Panama City up toward Apalachicola. Uh, then it moves toward the north, south Georgia. Then it's up toward the north. Look at that. I mean, this is this is a big time system, folks. Let's look specifically at the wind gusts with this. Uh, the wind gust swath upon landfall, you're talking 80, 90, 100 mile per hour wind. So it's cat two on this European model. But look how those winds are, are so high farther inland. 65, 70 mile per hour gusts up to Greenville. 40, 50, 55, 60 up through boom. Again, East Tennessee in that. But right here in Florida, that's where the landfall is going to be. But notice your winds are still high far inland. Let's switch that on over to the rain. So precipitation totals. I'm going to go state by state at this here in just a moment uh, as it moves on through these areas. Uh, and my daughter's coming in wanting a sucker. Ring pop it is. You want to say hello to the folks here? Saying hello. There's Olivia. I get your sucker open for you. Then we'll resume the talk here. Uh, I don't know all their names, but your name's Olivia. Take that to Mama, okay? I'll see you in a minute, okay? Hi. Hi, say bye. Bye. You wave to them? Okay, wave to them real quick. Say bye-bye. Okay. I'll see you in a little bit, okay? I got a sucker. She's got a sucker. All right. There we go. Let's get into the rainfall totals here across the upstate through Florida. Honestly, the rainfall totals inland through South Carolina, North Carolina, Georgia, Tennessee are higher than that of the coast by almost double. And you know why? It's because of the mountains and the elevation. That That's almost like, you know, you know the old uh, washboards whenever you're washing uh, clothes, right? It, that, that land, that mountain range is going to wring out more moisture over those areas and really pack a punch, okay? So here we go with, with landfall. Uh, this is the NAM model. We now have access to some of our high resolution models. So I wanna tell you rain begins, for those of you planning um, far inland, there's a front over the Western Carolinas, Tennessee. So rain begins tomorrow and then continues into Thursday, only gets worse as the day goes on Thursday. And it's not even made landfall yet. It's just that rotation around the system 
as it rolls on through, giving that impact far inland. And then it pushes up through Atlanta, up through Greenville, and that's when the rain's just coming down hard, heavy floodings of risk. And then it moves toward the north right there as this rolls on through. So big time impacts as you go north. Um, let's look at what this looks like on the GFS. The GFS has been far been the most uh, aggressive with wind. It moves a more quick pace. All right, it's so much further inland that Central Florida, so many of you, no matter no matter where you're watching from, inevitably everybody's asking about Disney World, Orlando, Universal. Uh, it's going to be rocking and rolling Thursday afternoon, Thursday night. You're in risks for severe weather. Just stay up, stay apprised, stay up on top of what's going on. If you're on vacation, of course, West Two News, Tony Manoffi, um, uh, my friend Eric Burris, uh, you know the team is going to keep you posted around the clock down there. Okay, so uh, if you're traveling out of town, I'd encourage you to watch West Two. Uh, my colleagues there are going to keep you posted. Uh, moving up through South Georgia, boy, this thing just doesn't weaken. You got 80 mile an hour gust outside of Savannah, Georgia, according to this GFS model, and wind gusts in Greenville, Spartanburg that are approaching 70 miles per hour, folks. Winds at that speed at the coast, you're thinking, ah, you know, it's a tough tropical storm, but we got that. Those winds in the mountains of Western North Carolina and in South Carolina are not the same. They, they have much higher impacts locally because of, of the trees, the geography, what we have. We don't do winds like that here, okay? So damage, power outages will certainly be possible Thursday night, Friday morning, into Friday afternoon. But things rapidly improve just as fast as they go down, they, they go back up because you get in on uh, some better conditions as we move forward here. Let's look at what this is showing for rainfall totals. My oh my, I mean, it's, it's, got, a, it's got a 21 inch swath here across Panama City. And then it won't, this is the new model actually. Uh, in fact, I'm going to go back here because we just had one refresh. Let's do that. Let's look at the wind speeds, wind gust swath. There we are. Um, gets us out to that but let's look at the precipitation that seems to be coming in earlier precipitation total it's got that bullseye over panama city now uh let's look at the pressure and again you're going to have these swings with the model it makes landfall as a strong cat two cat three moves toward the north there moves right over the upstate of south carolina and over the mountains okay and faster that's a key here, folks. This could really be a Thursday thing into Friday morning, but honestly, looking more like a Thursday thing. All right. Here's an average of the models from the, the folks at NOAA, rainfall totals. And folks, I can't stress this enough. Inland flooding is by far the most dangerous thing with any tropical system, okay? Flooding in general, storm surge flooding at the coast, inland flooding in areas like Western North Carolina, Western South Carolina. Five to 10 inches is a fair bet across Greenville, Atlanta, areas west of Charlotte. But you get up into the mountains, you got higher amounts. And I'm going to zoom in here. Let's start with Florida. Look at these rainfall totals. Central Florida, three, three to five. That's fine. Panama City, nearly a, nearly, you know, nearly a foot of rain. That's not fine. That would cause flooding. That would cause uh, you know, street flooding. Let's go up through Georgia. Same model, average of most of them. Now you're getting into some really mean totals. Notice the difference here. Five inches near landfall, but 6.8 in Greenville. We get more rain and more flood risks in Greenville than the coast does. It could be argued that the impacts are higher or just as high two states, three states away than at landfall, okay? Because flooding and these mountains just do so much. All right, let's look at it uh, closer to South Carolina, Western North Carolina. I'm gonna go through the storm, all right? So there we go. Five to 10 is my forecast across the Western Carolinas with some areas here, six, seven, eight. These whites here, if you look down at your key, are 10 inches or above. So there will be pockets here, typical trouble spots. I mean, zooming in specifically to Caesar's Head, Table Rock, up through Mount Mitchell, uh, Bearwalla Mountain, Lake Lure, Hickory Nut Gorge, stretching into uh, these higher elevations of Franklin, Mount Pisgah. Those areas are going to get in on 10, 15, maybe even 20 inches of rain. 
20 inches of rain in North Carolina is not a good thing. It flows downhill. It piles up at the bottom of those mountains and becomes a problem very, 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 very quickly. So inland flooding is by far one of my, my greatest concerns with this. But let's look specifically at those winds. We're getting uh, our models here. This is the high resolution NAM. It's got four, five, nine, ten inches of rain. Let's look at what this is doing with wind. This model's been a bit more aggressive with wind. 55, 60 gusts, 67, a core here of hurricane force winds. It looks like it transitions from a hurricane here over Augusta to a tropical storm here over Anderson, Greenville, and Spartanburg into the mountains, okay? That's where it, that's where it goes. European winds closer to home, 50, 55, and then GFS winds. Let's see if it's in. I'm going to refresh the screen for you and give you the most up-to-date information. Doesn't quite get us to that point, but I'll bop it back here. 67, 70 in Spartanburg, 76 toward Augusta, Columbia uh, in that situation. Let's bop down here and get a southeast view because we do have the model in bear with me for a second as we zoom it out to these areas here let's look at the see the trajectory if it's changed at all it looks like it's very very similar all right so folks uh simply put the time now is to prepare for what will be a major uh, impact major landfalling hurricane in Florida with high, high impacts through Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina. I need you to prepare for that. Now, what does that look like? That means making sure you have plans. Um, it's very likely school will be disrupted Thursday or Friday, depending on where you live. It's very likely that we have some trees come down. Take note of what's around your home right now. Do you have trees that are a little bit uh, decaying? Take note of that and, and act now. Honestly, that, that may mean sleeping on a different side of your house if that tree um, is vulnerable, okay? That may mean going to stay somewhere else for a day. Um, if you live in a mobile home or a camper or maybe you're vacationing um, near a body of water or river, hey, it's peaceful. It may, be, it may be 18 inches deep right now. But I'm telling you, with Fred, what we learned in Western North Carolina is that when you get this kind of tropical rain to come through, that gentle 18-inch stream becomes a roaring river. We had as many as 90 people missing and unaccounted for because they had to evacuate their campground so fast. They left their phones. They left everything. Uh, we had as many as five people lose their lives in those campgrounds because the water rose so quickly and at night. That's the case here. Thursday night, Friday morning, you go to bed. It's a gentle stream. It's a roaring river in uh, and, and, and a matter of an hour, okay? So it's time to take this serious. And, and the deal with this is you can't just check in right now and then not check in again until the storm hits. Things will change. Things will likely be altered. That path is going to sway a little bit. But I gotta tell you, there's been a lot of consistency in the models. Um, and this is going to be a high impact system wherever you live here. Uh, my commitment to you is to keep you posted around the clock with regard to this storm. Uh, it's my stick. It's what I do on television for 20 years. It's what I do for you online. Uh, Please, if you will, let me know in the comment section where you're watching from. That helps me out. I do read the comments. I try to get back to as many of you as I can. Um, but but also, I just really enjoy the, the community that we have here that we're able to grow. Uh, it's a passion of mine. All right, uh, folks, and if you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit subscribe. So wherever you're watching from, whatever channel you're watching on, hit subscribe to this channel. We would sure appreciate it. Guys, stay safe. My prayers are with you and your family, and I will keep you posted.